Hi folks, Brendan with eScoot now. I'm giving you a bit of a rundown on one of the newer model scooters we have, 2023, which is the Spiker Pro um, G30 in the eScoot now range. Uh, a UniGoGo unit, um, similar build to it, like a Dragon Lightning V2, similar factory, similar removable battery, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, Titan Unicals uh, unit. I think you've got some of the McCain's out with, with these. Um, few local sellers starting to bring them in. Uh, the one that I do is a, a configure to order unit uh, with an LG South Korean battery. Um, the tubeless tyres, uh, which will probably be standard throughout the year anyway, I think, but the vacuum tyre is standard, which would uh, the CTA that I've, I've got up here. And the, um, the suspensions, yeah, heavy spring, uh, so a coil spring with an oil uh, hydraulic um, shock inside. The spring which handles really nicely. So they're the, sort of the main differences between you know your standard two and a half thousand dollar unit and these ones which are about three grand. Um, give you a bit of a rundown on it. Effectively, you're running um, 1200 watt motors. Um, so 1200 watts nominal each on each motor. Um, the battery itself is a 52 volt um, system delivering 28.8 amp hours, and it's a South Korean LG battery itself. Um, so that's 1497 watt hours. Of, for endurance there. They'll give you um, anywhere between probably about uh, 53 to 90 kilometres, just depending on your riding style. Um, this particular unit went for a ride, uh, did 53 kilometres, managed to um, get me home um, down to about 44 volts or so, you know, up top hills and that sort of thing, so um, towards the end there. So, not, not a bad um, set of endurance. I probably find I'm probably getting about 10 to 15 percent more range. Uh, and I feel I'm getting about 10, 15 percent more power um, in this unit than what I'm getting out of say the Mantis Pro, which is a 60 volt system. So um, yeah, for a 52 it punches pretty well, and that's probably because the control is in there at 30 amp uh, each, so 30 amp for the front and rear mode. So um, what that delivers then is a total power of 3,120 watts um, at full throttle, um, which is great for the hills and for the torque and that sort of thing. Um, so this the CTO order on these are with the um, tubeless uh, tyre, so the motor itself is, um, is not the split rim, it's designed to handle a, a tubeless tyre. Um, so they're a special motor with these and the tyres themselves that come with 10 by 3 it's sort of a, a semi-off-road or somewhat off-road, it's a little bit chunky, uh, but the you know, rides pretty well on, on the road, I thought. Um, so what we've got here is um, <coughs> about 38 kilograms of weight. And um, I think most of that weight is uh, probably there in, in the build quality. Um, it's actually quite a, a thick, solid unit, the way it's constructed. I didn't find there was any um, backlash or anything moving, rattling around. It's actually pretty light on with regards to the amount of bolts that it has in it. Structurally, it's actually quite thick around the, the headset and the stem. Um, and the folding mechanism is, is actually very solid as, as well, the way they've designed it. Um, with the, with the fail safe here as well. So yeah, pretty pretty good um, build itself. Um, the brakes, they're just your standard sort of hydraulic brakes, which are the XADs. XAD levers are quite nice. Um, I find the levers feel quite firm. Um, from a hydraulic system, they're, they're pretty pretty good, I think. Um, probably feel a little bit nicer than the levers in the Zoom, um, in my opinion. They'll load up to about 150 kilograms of, of weight um, for a rider, so you can put a heavier rider on it because the suspension is quite heavy. Um, and even though it's got long swing arms, it doesn't sort of sag or anything like that with, with the weight because of that suspension, I suspect. Um, top speed on these, as you'd expect for any sort of you know decent 52 volt system, you're up to sort of 65, 70 k's an hour, I guess, at top speed. But most importantly, the ride handling and comfort. Um, the way it navigates over terrain, um, obstacles, you know, bumps, potholes, um, ed edges of curbs, footpaths, that sort of thing. It just sort of, just takes you straight through. It just carries itself, really. You, you don't have to find that you're shifting your weight or manipulating the scooter to really get over those bumps um, without too much shock. So um, it just rides really nicely. Um, <clears throat> it's very, center of gravity is quite low. Um, I felt when, when I ride it, sort of compared to some of the higher scooters, um, so, as in scooters that are the higher clearance off the, off the ground, um, but still has enough clearance, you know, for bumps and that sort of thing. So you're not going to bottom out or anything like that over the speed bumps and that sort of stuff. 
Um, what else do we normally look at when we check these things out? What else do we got here on the specs? Uh, that's probably about it for the specs. So yeah, there are some 25 amp controller versions around, but I've, I've gone to 30 with these. Um, there's an older type of shock as well that they had, which was just a hydraulic cartridge itself, no spring. Um, so these, as you can see, a lot of photos and stuff that I've, I've got there, you can see that it's actually a nice, quick, um, nice thick spring on it. Um, but you know, I just found that, um, that with the length of the deck, um, the width of the bars, the height of the bars is actually quite nice. Um, and the solid, solid sort of design of it, that um, things ran really nicely. Um, I didn't feel as anxious, you know, coming up to obstacles and bumps and that sort of thing. So there is a key. It's uh, there's a key lock up the top here. A couple of keys come with that. They go on the top. Then you turn it in. That's uh, will allow it to power on. Power buttons underneath the throttle. Hold the power button down. So these, uh, these throttles here, quite nice, pretty responsive. Um, I found that I wanted to sort of play with the P settings a bit. Um, ultimately, I sort of kept the throttle at about sort of four out of five with regards to initial start, um, initial power, if you wish. Um, e e brake, electric braking on on the system, I probably run at about three out of five. If you have it up to about four or five, you'll find that it might be a bit too aggressive. Um, and of course, it, it cuts out after probably you know, five se seconds or so, just so it's not to um, have any over voltage damaging anything else in the control or battery from that. So if it's a bit too aggressive, it, when it automatically stops um, regen, you sort of run forward a bit. So just a little bit lighter, probably three out of five for that. Um, and everything else is pretty much 100% with regards to power, top speed. But yeah, good, good piece settings in it. Um, nice screen, nice, easy to read display. Um, works out quite nice. The instrumentation is pretty good. You've got your light switch here, um, which is easy to get to. The indicators are, are nice. I, I really like the sliders, the, the rocker switches to slide between left and right to indicate. Much better than a lot of the rubber buttons that you have as micro switches. Um, so you're very easy to navigate that. The little horn, not too bad, not too tin. Um, so indicators themselves on the side, uh, which are viewable from the, the side and the rear. They just flash the, the red DRL running lights that are on the side, really. Um, so not orange, but um, yeah, there's some sort of indication there. On the rear as well, there's the tail light uh, at the back here. And of course, the light switch just sort of navigates all those switches on and off. There's a couple of white uh, DRL running lights at the front of the deck, just at the front there. And the headlight itself isn't too bad. Um, a nice long throw, so it's one of those ones that's got the sort of 6D lens on it, so a good, good nice long throw, um, but not really wide, um, pretty cold, um, but you know, sort of bright enough to shine, shine ahead sort of, you know, 10, 15 um, metres down the road quite easily, um, focusing on that area. Battery is removable, similar to a Lightning V2, they're the same as the um, Dual Pro sort of design from um, Titan Unigoda that they have on Lightning V2. Um, removable, so you just unplug in. I might just turn it off for this one. So just, you can um, remove the plug, so there's like a proprietary plug on here for the, the battery. Um, oh, it's a little lever there to pull it up, so you've got your proprietary connector there and a little handle, so you can just remove the battery. The battery itself is really nice uh, with the case, it's a nice sort of um, heavy aluminium unit, probably about nine kilograms of battery weight in it. LG cell, South Korea, uh, it's a 14S, 8P, so 14 series, 8 in parallel, and um, yeah, 28 uh, amp per hour, 18650 cells it's in that one. You can charge it up with the two charging ports that are here if you wanted to on the bench, um, or the two charging ports that are on, on the side. It's a DC barrel jack connected for the charging ports, not a GX13 3 pin. Um, very solid around the, the deck I feel. Um, probably not the best waterproofing that you would expect because of the the seals on it but um, yeah as far as the actual physical build quality goes they're pretty solid. So plugging that in there is pretty easy if you want it to be going swapping batteries it wouldn't be too hard to do. Um, what it is there. Stands quite nice, thick heavy stand Quite a good sort of, you know, as you'd expect on the, on the newer generations of scooters. Um, stands quite heavy. There's a single or dual button on here for um, single and dual motor. 
just keep right in drill with my recommendation all the time, just spread the weight and that uh, load over the motors, control it and that sort of thing, always ride and drill unless you really don't want any slipping traction on the front or gravel or something like that, best to stay away from gravel anyway. Um, yeah, so all that, um, just feels really nice and solid really, it's very easy to, easy to ride. Um, particularly, you know, at those higher speeds, um, didn't feel it needed a dampener or anything like that on it. Um, there is an optional CTO on a dampener if you need, and there's an optional on the nut brakes now, I think, as well. Um, but they're probably not really necessary. You might want to maybe upgrade the tyres to road tyres if you sort of want premium tyres, that sort of thing, because they're just a standard semi off road tyre. Um, but as I say, I didn't have any traction issues, it wasn't too noisy wasn't bouncing around I think too much. Um, there's certainly no rebound with the suspension um, because the hydraulics, you know, dampening so you don't get any, any rebound pushback. Um, so your folding is pretty easy. There is a little uh, latch here which locks underneath here, which if you push up um, and then if you keep your weight on it, it'll um, lift up quite easily. It's actually not too not too bad as far as the maneuverability goes as you'd expect for sort of just a sub 40 kilogram split of this um, class. Folding that up there. That's all you've got to do to lock it in. So it's really simple to, to fold and unfold. Um, but yeah, nothing, nothing loose at all. You could probably remove this yellow thing here and paint it again if you want, because it's just th three bucks on each side to take it off. Um, swing arms themselves, I thought they'd get really dirty. They actually sort of sharp a little bit of dirt, but because um, they're bright, you know. But uh, yeah, that's, that's the colour of the swing arms, I guess. Um, same with the deck. Rear foot rest uh, was really good um, as far as getting length out of the ride goes um, and I didn't have any issues with any of the folding mechanism um, retainers or the depth lift hinge getting in the way. It's pretty comfortable and they're quite wide um, really for, uh, for width on your other foot there so that was pretty good. Um, Power, as I say, torque on that hills is pretty impressive for a 52 volt system, probably more than any other sort of 52 volt that I've ridden. Um, as I say, compared to the Mantis Pro, which is 27 amp control, these are 30s. Um, Mantis being 60 volt system, uh, as opposed to 52 on this with the Mantis Pro. I reckon there's probably around about 10% more power and torque um, out of this one, which is possibly due to the um, slightly newer sine wave controller design. Very nice, but um, yeah, good good unit. Just just a, a good, safe, reliable unit. It's, um, it seems to be built well. Cable management so it seems to be pretty good. The way the brake lines run through, everything's sort of pretty tidy and stuff. So um, yeah, that's the goal. So that's um, what I have is, is a um, G30, uh, the Spiper. I'm not called so as such because it's probably a little bit like inspired by a, um, a Viper uh, or the, the Bolson. Um, sniper sort of design that you, you've got at the higher price point. Um, but yeah, it's certainly not a, a Nami Bernie um, Viper built um, unit, sort of as far as the size of the thing goes and that sort of stuff. It's just, a, yeah, it's just like you can go and ride at you know, 50, 55 kilometers um, to on group ride or whatever as you, as you normally expect to be able to do in a higher class scooter. Um, so there's probably not too many scooters at the three grand price point that are going to give you that much battery power and right hand and I think that um, they're pretty good and we'll probably see a few of those um, this year with Mr McCain and some of their units they've got here in Australia and uh, some of the other global ones that are going, going out there as well, other brands. Um, uh, Kugo Curran is sort of the original ADM, um, Kugo Curran, it's a G3 Pro they call it, um, not to be confused with the G3 Non Pro which was Probably not the best scooters for reliability guys, but yeah, these are the Unigogo um, units, so they're uh, manufactured pretty nicely for the same sort of manufacturers we have, so the original 0810s and the BMC, like you know, Raptors and that sort of stuff. Um, I would suggest um, that if you take one for a ride, you'll probably find that they're actually quite nice as far as how they feel. Um, you would probably find that, yeah, you, you wouldn't want anything much more unless you were chasing, I would suspect, more range again, you know, more than 28 amp per hour, you wouldn't have to push up to the 35 amp per hour, push up to about 4, 
four grand plus or whatever, something like that. Often five. Um, deck length, as I say, was really good. I could, I could accommodate the deck length really well. Um, so yeah, not really much more to sort of say about about that one. It's um, it's new for 2023. This one is um, sort of only just landed with me. Some of them are the same ones. Uh, the McCain ones have been around a, a few weeks. So they're pretty, pretty good by the sounds of initial thoughts from them. Um, how much they give the tyre, battery, and um, maybe suspension. Who knows with, with those usual limits. But, so these are, the, these are the CTOs and they're probably the to go for that suspension and the battery. Um, manual's pretty good, it's got all the keys in there, a case sort of written in there. Um, the cover will be in the pump, which is probably pretty useless. You just use a Joby pump for those, but yeah, it's a couple of those. Uh, the packaging, really well packaged. Like, um, I've seen some of the unboxing reviews that have been done overseas, and they've got heaps, like, heaps of foam all the way through it, so it's, it holds up really well in, in packaging, which is great because obviously it's just got the individual carts come straight out of the factory, so they're. Um, they need to hold up all right, which they do, as, as does the G, G20, um, the Pro Max that I do, which is a single motor, smaller version of this, but with the same sort of suspension um, as well. So they're, um, yeah, they're, they're not that sort of you know, key damage you would expect in, in transit. Um, yeah, that's about it. That's the initial thoughts. So I've you know, just done one ride, 55 k's an hour, and sort of thought I'd share that with you. And all the specs are now pretty much. Um, Sorted and refined, this newer suspension is a little bit more um, generous than the sort of stiffer um, hydraulic cartridge that they had in the, in the older units, so they've got a back. Uh, there's a 25 amp per hour controller, so a smaller controller, which is, is coupled up and paired with the smaller sort of 20 amp per hour um, Chinese batteries, of course, because they can't sustain much more than that. Um, I think some of the 23 and maybe the 25, probably 23 amp per hour ones. Um, they're normally 25 amp as well, but that, I think that can be upgraded to 30 amps. So the ones in Melbourne that they've got there gone up to 30 and those, I'm not too sure. They're just a lot of them, a lot of them don't even really tell you what sort of controller they're using and tyre and motor and that sort of stuff. I'm pretty sure these motors are 52 volt or 60, they'll do both. Um, uh, these, these motors, according to the price list on the spares, all the spares are pretty good. I think they've got spares, available spares, but I don't. Think there's anything too much that you're going to need in the way of spares to hold on these um, initially everything's pretty solid a lot of these items are generic interesting that the power button is part of the um, throttle which is interesting this is one of the first scooters to have the power button built into the throttle um, not a bad idea um, yeah so that's um that's pretty much about it i think gives you a bit of an idea what you're looking at um, enjoy um, I, I normally sort of try to keep one or two available and stock on the floor or have one on, sort of on delivery if you need one. Um, I just sort of have these because they've got the extras uh, from the factory which a lot of the other local ones don't have so it's just um, that's the area speciality here with these stick now. But it's um, yeah, I mean, global model, um, global forums on, on socials if you want to have a look to see you know any problems, issues, um, modifications, all that sort of stuff, riding tips, that's something that, that comes with these on, on the social. So they're, they're a reputable, um, globally aware brand with a, a bit of a community behind it. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're pretty pretty well built from, uh, as you expect, from um, Uni GoGo, which is sort of the sister company of Uni Cool that did the 010X and that sort of stuff that I mentioned. So they're um, yeah, pretty re reputable as far as um, having their design, their R&D, right, their quality. Um, yeah, that's a pretty good one. Um, and from the factory ship pretty well, with regards to bolts, I didn't really find I need to actually tighten any of the things on the bolts up too much, they're all pretty, pretty firm. Um, bolt tied it through pretty well. Um, even the ones that are sort of, the, the, the bolts are screws that don't have any plastic uh, sort of stuff, they're all sort of um, set pretty well. The brakes from the factory were aligned um, beautifully as well as they always have been in, in my experience with the, the Spy Path uh, and the, the, even the G2 Pro Max series. I've got the small one of these. Um, so, yeah, they seem to have you know, done the nice like, sort of QA and final checks in the factory to make sure that um, the unit's delivered without any issues of being DOA or anything like that. So, um, that's about it. But, yeah, plenty of Plenty of pick up and grunt, um, take off um, on that throttle for a 52 volt system. 
um, good range, um, but it's, it's just made of the right hand, and I think it's just that suspension, the fact that it's not too heavy, uh, 39 kilograms. Um, the heavier scooters you sort of need to sort of really work with them to help them shift their weight, whereas these being a bit lighter, a bit more agile. Um, so you, you, you don't need to be sort of focusing on having to shift your weight around as much to navigate bumps and that sort of thing. If you're sort of going through something that looks look a little bit tricky, you normally just keep your hands on the bars and, and just hold a steady throttle and then they just go straight through those obstacles. So it, um, it's really safe for the rider and just responsiveness on, on the brakes and the ability to sort of respond and manoeuvre on the things um, is, is really good. It's not, not too heavy. Um, it's sort of, yeah. Pick it up, you can do a lot of steers on it if you have to. Um, it's just um, sort of unit. And then when you're looking at the suspension itself, so you've got, you know, you've, you've actually got quite a, a bit there. Um, it's not adjustable, but it's, it's, you know, unless you're sort of in the 120, 150 kilograms, I can't imagine you would pop them out too much. I can't, I can't bottom out on it. Probably never gone that far. It's only a bit sat there. And then the front one, which is, you know, so you're probably looking um, more than enough suspension for a scooter of that size and still relatively, compared to scooters that are in that price point and above, a relatively small scooter and for the start of size, that's pretty fatigued. So, there you go, so yeah, that's your um, Unigogo G30 Pro. Um, or as, as I've named it, the G3 Viper. Um, and it's here. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Right, thanks. Hope you enjoyed. Take care.